So as we get started today, this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point, just a look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com, I have a brand new afghan for you today. So this is the Holly Jolly. So Holly Jolly, mm -hmm, it's the best time of the year. And this is an amazing project. So it's just coming out in July 2021. And when you look at this, yes, it looks like Christmas wrap. It's amazing with a nice thick border. And then it has a Holly uh, idea put onto the edge that's three dimensional with some pom poms. So that's pretty cool. So if you've done mosaic before, this is actually a different stitch than what we've done in the past. So you can see that there's a red and green white version and a blue and white version that you see there. And it's a really neat idea and there's a diagram that you can follow and it's on page number four. So the designer is giving us an idea on how the stitch multiples are. So the pieces in between the red is actually the stitch multiple when you're looking at the pattern and seeing the repeat pattern. So that's something that you can just keep an eye on but when I go through the, the rows I'm going to be giving you that information as well so you can go either way. So it's a nice idea because the fact is is that there's not a lot of stitch work in between where these pieces appear. So when you're looking at it from this perspective it's actually really quick um, transition from one box to another. So there's not a lot of um, I wouldn't say thought process but there's not a lot of uh, mind tricks in order to get there. And so it's a nice easy to repeat and what I decided to do for myself is that I marked once I hit the first row and once I hit to the 12th, I marked it on my sample here so that I could just see where it is. So I just actually put a, a white line in there. So this here is the actual um, repeat there. So then it repeats and repeats and repeats. So eventually I think you can put the pattern away and actually just kind of follow it along but of course this is always handy to have. So you'll need a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook and we're using Red Heart Super Saver today. And it's a really nice idea and you can do use any colors that you would like to use. And then there's a diagram for the holly leaf but we have to start our blanket first. So without further ado, let's just get involved with that and let's just take a little bit closer look at this diagram and then we'll get started. When you're looking at these diagrams what you have to consider is that when you skip a stitch you're not just chaining one to skip the stitch you're changing and chain, uh, chain, <laughs> chaining an extra number. So for example if you have to skip one stitch you're chaining two. If you have to skip uh, two stitches you're chaining three. If you have to skip three stitches you're chaining four. So just keep that in mind when you're being able to work on this is that that's the concept. And the reason for the extra chain is so that the chain will sink more behind so that this stays flush. So that extra chain is making sure that all the stitches here when I actually zoom out here all the stitches will remain completely flat. So the back of this it's going to look like this. It's going to look like a candy cane. So it's going to appear like this and all the fun stuff is happening on the one side. The beautiful thing about a pattern like this is that because you can see everything happening on the good side here, um, you can't really make a mistake too much in that sense. So you're not really doing anything on the back here that um, is going to force this to happen. So it's a nice idea. The other thing that I would recommend to you is to get a sticky note and when you're moving it up just put it down on top of the line so that you can follow and so then when you're ready to continue up then you just move this up and therefore you won't get confused on where you are. So that's what we would do behind the scenes. So I'll be doing that as well and let's move on. I'm doing a swatch sample with you today. I can't use white on a white background because you'll hardly see it. And we're going to start. So you can either chain 164 with your color A yarn or you can do multiples of 10 plus 14. So if you're doing the multiples of 10 it's 10, 10, 10, 10. When you're happy with the width of it just add another 14. So I, that's what I'm going to do. So chain 164 or multiples of 10 plus 14. So I'll do the multiples. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then I'll do it again. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, four, five 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And I'm gonna say this is wide enough for me and I'm just gonna add 14. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So this will be a multiple of 10 plus 14 or chain 164 and let's move on then 
and uh, don't message me to say what how many chains that you need to do for certain sizes. What I would recommend you do is do your multiples of 10 and then lay it down on something that you want the size or next to a tape measure and then just add your 14 then once you're satisfied with pretty well close to the same length. Let's uh, move on to the first row. So first row keeping the same color you're gonna go second chain from the hook and just turn it over and get the back hump of the chain and just single cr crochet yourself all the way and it's gonna be the very last stitches that we're gonna change the color. We are not going to be cutting the yarn colors as we're uh, working our way across this thing and up and down the, the rows. So we're gonna be carrying those colors when we get there. So just single crochet in your chain all the way across. When you get all the way to the last one do not finish the single crochet. So go into the chain and just leave two on the hook and what we're going to do is grab your secondary color yarn that you wanna play with. Create a slip knot first just to get yourself started. Create an extra long chain as well so that you can throw that through a tapestry needle at the end of your project in order to hide it. So what you wanna do is put the new color on, leave the other color in place and finish it. So then this color is going to be the color that we're going to begin as we start up with the setup row number two and three. Let's uh, be, uh, turn our work and let's go back to the diagram and let's tell you a little bit more what you're looking at. So when you look carefully at here you can see that there's two grayed out here and then there's two not grayed out and etc. So those are telling you that's the color. So uh, you can see that the this row number two and three share the same color and then the, when we start to repeat this is going to be the same color in the white and same color. So you're gonna use the one color to go all the way across and then turn around and come back in the opposite direction. When you come back in the opposite direction with the secondary, with the with any of the colors, it's always gonna be a repeat on what you just did. However, you're not gonna be jumping down to do anything. So it's only on the right side of the project that you're going to be doing any jump down when it's required. But currently we're on setup row number two to start. There's nothing to jump down to because we're just getting ourselves started. So we need to create those spaces. So you can see that we're going to single crochet the first four stitches and we're gonna skip one and then chain two and then do the next three. Skip one, chain two and then do the next five. And then chain two, skip the next one and etc. So when you come all the way back across I'm going to say match chain to chain, stitch to stitch and I'll say that each and every time when we're on this side of the project going backward and the reason why I'm doing that is that I want you to understand that when you're returning back there's nothing to jump down to. So let's begin setup row number two. So leaving the green off to the side, just leave it out of your way. Sometimes I just put it on top of my lap but don't disconnect it in any way. You're going to begin the row. So you're gonna chain up one and you're going to single crochet the first three. If you would like to put the starting straggler underneath it, you can secure that that way too and you can do the starting one for the next four stitches. Okay, so you're gonna do the first one and you can pull things tight when you go to jump up the rows. So you're gonna just go up. So we're gonna do the first four. So this is two, three and four. Then we're going to then chain two, skip only one stitch and then single crochet the next three. So we're gonna do one, two and three. And then chain two, skip one stitch and then do the next five. So one, two, three, four and five. So you're gonna have what is going to appear is three single crochets in a row and then five in a row with these spaces that are in between. So we're gonna skip two, sorry we're gonna chain two, skip one stitch, do the next three. So one, two, three, and then chain two, skip one and do the next five. So one, two, three, four and five. Chain two, skip one, do the next three. So one, two, and three. And you're just gonna continue that same patterning going all the way across but eventually you'll hit the other side. So if your counts are gonna be right it's gonna be awesome. So just chain two. So you'll have the three as being one of the last that has to go in there and you'll skip one and you should have only four stitches left. So one, 
two, three, and four. So this is the first time using the red. So as I mentioned, so let's just turn our work and do setup row number three. So when we turn around, we're on the back side of the project. So what, if there's a single crochet or any stitch in there, you're going to just put in a single crochet. And if there's a chain two or chain three or chain four, depending on what row you're on, you're just gonna add the same amount of chains to, to, to jump. So just chain up one and single crochet in each of the stitches that you have. And we're about to hit this chain. So we know it's a chain two. So keep it as a chain two and then just jump onto the single crochet on the other side. So you'll be doing that all the way across when you're on the back of the projects. So chain two, skip and come on over. So please do this all the way for setup row number three. And then when I get to the other side, we're gonna change our yarn back to green. Do not cut this yarn. We're gonna just carry it up on the side and we'll carry on into starting the actual repeat of this stitch combination. So I'm coming all the way across and I'm just matching stitch to stitch, chain for chain. And on the very last one, when you go in, you don't wanna finish that stitch. Let this color fall out of the way and grab the yarn of the other color you're using. In my case, it's green. And just make sure it's taut coming up, not too loose, and finish it with that and then you're ready then. And we're going to officially then start row number one in the repeat pattern. So in the diagram here, we're going to start here, which is row number one, and we're gonna go through all the way through row number 12. The next row that you see there is the actual finishing row when you're finally finished the project. So you don't wanna do that until you're actually done. So I'm just gonna take my sticky note now and I'm going to apply it here. And so we're going to single crochet then the first three, chain two, and you are going to then double crochet all the way down into here. So these chain twos that are here, you're just gonna go in front of those and just come into here. So this chain, our double crochet is just laying in the front. So you'll double or single crochet the next three in a row and then you'll jump on down and then chain to two to jump the next stitch and then you have three in a row. So this here is the repeat that you can see. So it's going to be the same pretty much every time. So just chain two, jump down, do the next three, jump down and chain two and etc. and you'll do that all the way across. Let's start row number one and two now. So let's begin row number one. You're going to chain one and you'll single crochet only the first three. So we have one, two and three. So you can see that you have four single crochets below. So you're gonna chain two and jump over the next one and just jump on down into the one that you skipped way down here. So that'll be just a double crochet that you'll go down in there. So that chain two counted as the one that you skipped. This double crochet counts as the next one that is in the line which is the chain two. And so you're gonna just officially just, just then single crochet these next three in a row. So one, two, three, and then jump on down. So when you looked at this, we chained two before we jumped. So when you're looking at it from this perspective, you're now going to chain two and skip over the first single crochet that you're running into and just single crochet then the next three after that. So one, two, three and you can see there's a box that's just about to get started. So let's repeat what we know. We're gonna chain two, we're gonna skip over the next one and then jump on down. We're then going to single crochet the next three in a row and then jump on down. And remember that we chain two before we started this, so we have to chain two after and then just skip the next one out and just begin again. So single crochet the next three, chain two to jump over and then double crochet the next one down. Single crochet the next three and you're gonna repeat this idea going all the way across please. So you're gonna skip the next one and then eventually you'll hit the other side like I am and you'll single crochet the last three that you have. So that was row number one. So just take a look at it, make sure that it makes sense when you're zooming it out here. Let me just bring you out a little further. So you can see 
what's happening. So when you turn around to do row number two, so whenever it's an even number two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve, it's always the same instruction. So you're just gonna match stitch, 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 chain for chain. So just chain one single crochet in each of the stitches. That includes the drop down if there is one. Okay, so there's a chain two, so I'm gonna chain two to jump. And the next one here, this is a double crochet, so you're just gonna match it with a single crochet right on top of it and single crochet. The rest of the single crochets in a row. And an easy way to be able to remember this is that these combinations are made up of odd numbers. So there's a total of five stitches there. So it's either gonna be five or seven or three and it's an easy way to remember. So chain two to jump and etc. So whenever I'm gonna return back I'm gonna say match stitch to stitch, stitch to stitch, chain for chain and that's exactly what I mean. So just uh, continue to go along and I'll see you at the end of this row and we'll turn around and do number three. So when I come to the end, so whenever you're finishing up a color, so you're gonna go across with the color and then back the very last stitch you're going to want to change it back to the other color that you've been playing with so that you can get it ready. So every two rows is the same color and I'm gonna rely on you to do that in the future without showing you what I'm doing. So just change the color back and let's move on to row number three. So in row number three we're going to chain up one and single crochet in the first one and we're gonna chain three and jump two. So we're gonna chain three and then immediately just jump down into the first chains that you see and then you're going to single crochet the next five, jump down and then chain four and skip three stitches and then jump down and then you'll do five in a row, jump down and etc. And then you'll, when you come back just make sure that you match the number of chains to change. Uh, chains to chains. <laughs> okay, let's begin number three and five, uh, three and four. Okay, number three, we're gonna chain up one and you're only gonna single crochet in the first one. And then you're gonna chain three. So one, two, three. And then you're just gonna immediately just jump, uh, skip the next two and then just jump on down with that double crochet only in that red. So these double crochets are just lying on top of the work. And then you're going to single crochet the next five in a row. So we have one, two, three, four, five and now you're gonna jump on down. So this time we're now in the middle section of the blanket. So whenever it's in the middle section you're gonna be chaining four. So one, two, three, four. The chain three is only on the edge. So now you're gonna skip the next three in a row and you're gonna come on and jump on down. Then you're going to crochet the next five in a row. So one, two, three, four, five and then jump on down and then chain four because you're in the middle of the project. So one, two, three, four, skipping the next three stitches and so you're gonna just jump on down and now you do the next five. So you do this all the way across. So one, two, three, four and five and then once you're getting close to the end when you jump down you're going to be chaining only three. So one, two, three, skipping the, the next two and going as a single crochet right in these to the edge. And so you're just gonna look at it. Does it look, make, look, does it make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So these ones are gonna be showing a green box in the middle of that. That's why you're creating these spaces now. So when you turn your work row number four, you're just gonna match stitch to stitch, chain for chain. So just chain up one single crochet. We know this is a chain three, so just make it as a chain three to jump it. And then just single crochet your next batch that you have. That includes the double crochets that are jumped down. And now we know the ones in the middle we're chaining up for. So one, two, three, four and then jump on over. Please do this all the way back and have your yarn changed over and we'll begin row number five and six. So let's now look at five and six. So what we're going to do is that we're going to chain one, single crochet in the first one and the next two are gonna be dropped down in a row. You're going to chain two and jump the, jump the next one and just do the next five. 
chain two to jump over the single crochet and these ones that have the chain four you're just gonna put three single or three double crochets in a row and then chain two after it. So just keep in mind that when you're in the middle that you have to chain two, two to jump over the single and then come on down three times and then chain two and jump over the, the first single after that and you're gonna do this and then when you come back just match all the stitches together with those single crochets and chains. Let's begin five and six. Okay, let's begin five and six. So you're just gonna chain up one and do one single crochet in the first. And so the next two that are next are going to be jumping down with the double crochet. So this is making the inner boxes solid. Before you're finishing this though, you have to chain two to jump the first one. That is the next one coming out. And then you'll do the next five. So one, two, three, four and five. So you'll skip the last one before this chain four space. So this is the repeat. So you just chain two to skip that one and you'll do the next three in a row. Just jump on down. And then after you've jumped down you gotta chain two to skip the first one out. So chain two, skip the first one and do the next five. So one, two, three, four and five. So chain two to jump over the next one and then do your three jump downs. Okay, chain two. Skip the first one out and do the next five. One, two, three, four and five. Skip the next one so chain two to jump it and then jump on down. So on the very edge you'll only have two jumping down completely because it's an edge. So in between in the in the middle of the project there's three jump downs but on the edges it's only two. And then just single crochet in the last one and then turn your work chain one and match stitch to stitch, chain for chain, that's row number six. So I'll meet you back and change your color back when you get to the other side. Now let's do rows seven and eight. So you're gonna chain up one and you'll do the first three as single crochets and then jump on down. You'll chain two after that and then do the next three. So you're, jump, you're jumping this one so you do the next three, chain two and then jump on down and then you're just gonna be in between the boxes that you'll find and so you just single crochet the next three, jump on down, chain two after it, do the next three and chain two. So make sure that when you're doing these chains you're, you're skipping over the stitches that they're over and then when you come back obviously chain to chain, stitch to stitch. I can barely say that word today. Let's begin number seven and eight. Let's begin number seven and eight. So just chain up one and single crochet in the first three. So we have one, two and three and then you're going to jump on down. And if you're really paying attention you'll notice that this red box has now been completed when you look at it from that perspective. Now you're gonna chain two, skip the next one out and just do the middle three. So one, two and three. Chain two to skip and then come on down. And then do the next three in a row and you can see that this box, the red box is going to be completed and then jump on down. So if you can see the similarities you can put your pattern away in, in time right. So just chain two, skip the next one, do the next three. So one, two, three and this skipping that you're doing is going to create the, the framework for the green box that will appear in the future. You watch and you'll see that happen. So just continue along. So it's almost like a self satisfying idea that when you're coming across you can actually start to see this pattern materializing and you're officially on row number seven. Chain two. But I would keep your pattern handy anyway even with the sticky note just to make sure that you're not gonna get 
confused because that can happen. So once you get the last drop down, the last three stitches will be single crochets. So you can kind of see what's happening here. So when you turn row number eight, stitch the stitch, chain for chain, and I'll see you at the back end of this and I'll see you on row number nine and ten in just a moment. Okay, let's now do nine and ten. So nine is here. We're going to chain up one and do the first four. Jump on down. We're then going to chain four to skip these three and then jump on down. So just jump on down, chain four and jump on down and then you'll single crochet the next five in a row and then jump on down, chain four and then jump on down and that's gonna be number nine and then you'll come back across and you'll see that the next coloring of boxes then will start to appear as well. So let's begin row number seven, or row number nine and ten. Let's begin number nine. Chain up one and let's single crochet the first four in a row. So one, two, three and four and then jump on down. So then what you're going to do is chain four. So one, two, three, four and then come on all the way over here and jump on down. Just like that. And then you'll single crochet them the next five in a row. So one, two, three, four, five. So you see here that the middle of this green box will be red and basically it's the opposite to what you see here. So then once you have that five in, you're just gonna jump on down and then chain four. So one, two, three, four, and then jump on down the other side. And do the next five in a row. So one, two, three, four, five. Jump on down first. And then chain four. So one, two, three, four, and then jump on down. And then once you get to the end, you'll only have four in a row left. So one, two, three, and four. So you can see that you're getting your green boxes all set up and ready for the next time. So when you turn around on row number 10, you're matching stitch to stitch, chain for chain. So there's four chains in a row. So make sure you use four chains to jump on over. Please do this for row number 10. I'll see you on number 11 and 12 in just a moment. So rows number 11 and 12 is the end of the repeat. So we're just going to do number 11. So you're gonna chain up one and do four in a row. You'll chain two and then you'll have three that will jump on down. Chain two after it and you'll skip the first one out and just do the, the middle five and then chain two and then jump on down for three in a row. Chain two after it and then continue that all the way down to the other side. And then of course coming back on 12 is stitch the stitch, chain for chain. Please do, let's do now uh, rows number 11 and 12 and let's begin. So let's do number 11. You're gonna chain up one and you'll single crochet the first four in a row. So we have one, two, three, four. And now you're going to chain two to jump. One, two, so you'll jump over the next one and then come on down for the next three. So this is creating that center box color that you see. So last time it was a center of green, this time it's the center of red. So chain two after it to jump the first single crochet out and then just do the first, the next five. So one, two, three, four, five. Chain two to jump and then come on down for the next three in a row. Chain two to jump. So skip the first one and do the next five. So one, two, three, four, five. Chain two to jump and then come on down for the next three. So you'll do this all the way across. This is row number 11 and of course coming back you'll, you know what to do. Chain to chain, stitch to stitch. So chain two to jump and do the last four in a row. 
So I'm gonna have you turn your work and do row number 11 or row number 12 and then um, we're going to be, meet back here and let's cover what we've learned and how you're gonna move on from here. So on the project here I've now finished the repeat pattern of 1 through 12. So what we have to do is we have to go back to the diagram and we have to look at it and reverse ourselves all the way back. So we need to go back to all the way to number one again to restart. So we've already got that film so you can just continue just to go back. Well, if you look at the player window you, you can see the chapters. So just look for row number one and then continue to go again. So you'll go through one through twelve as many times as you wanna go and uh, let's take a look at the pattern and see how far it wants us to go. So it says to repeat the pattern to about 45 and a half inches and you're gonna end on the twelfth row which is where we are here. So the next row that you see here is going to be the final row of once you have everything done. So the very final row, the, the only difference is instead of creating any new chains to create open spaces, we're gonna close everything down and just make sure if you have to drop down then you'll drop down. So just continue now to repeat rows number one through twelve as many times as you'd like to or the forty five and a half inches and then we're gonna move on to doing the next row which would be how to finish. So we're gonna move on to that. So once you get to the next row which will be the very final row you want you're officially done with the, the red so you can just cut that and I'll show you how to weave in the ends and just uh, after this and we're gonna do the very final row. So you're just gonna chain up one and you're just gonna match all the stitches together. So if you have to drop down then just drop down which you will have to drop down. So don't leave any open spaces on the edge. So here is a space there so you're gonna wanna drop down so you're not creating any open spaces any, any longer so that you have a nice finished look. And then coming on down. So you're gonna do this all the way across for row, uh, the next row which is the final row of your blanket and then we're gonna be moving on to the border in just a moment. But before I do that we're, I'm gonna get all the way to the end and I'm just gonna show you how to secure in your ends and we're then going to move on to the border after that. So I'll see you back here in a second. So I'm coming all the way to the end and this is gonna be the end of the story and I am going to then just fasten off. So I'm just gonna trim my yarn and with any of the tail ends that we have including the ones that we left over here with this uh, red when we go to put it in we wanna hide it into the red color itself. So I'll just show you one time. Just get a tapestry needle. It's the best way to do it. Don't use your crochet hook to hide it in because it'll pop out. And then just turn it to the back side and just run the needle or the tapestry needle to the inside of the stitch work. Do not interfere with the color that is not the same color as that strand. And just go back and forth a total of three times. So you wanna pull on it so it's taut but not to the point where it's changing the shape. So any loose ends including the starting strands you're gonna wanna do that and that would be how you have a nice finished look. We're now going to move on to the border next and let's begin our journey. So I'm gonna bring you back to my sample that I was working on last night. So we're gonna now do the border edge. So the border edge has actually some really great advice. It says um, work single crochet evenly across around the blanket. So when you're on the tops here you can actually do your single crochets in each of the stitches but on the sides here it says work approximately four single crochets evenly spaced along every fifth row. So every stitch here, right? So this is one row, this is the next row and next row and next row and etc. So you see that there's two rows of each color. So it says every fourth color you're just gonna wanna skip over one of the rows in order to keep it balanced. So if you put in a single crochet in the end of each one of those rows you could have it buckling and I think that's why they're suggesting that. So the first uh, goal is to get ourselves established with whatever color you would like to do and let's begin the first round of the border. We will be turning the project uh, at the end of each round in order to have the consistent look that you have on the front face of this. So make sure the front side of your project is facing up so it's the good side and the stripes are facing down away from you. We can begin anywhere on this and so I guess let's just start at the top here corner and begin the first round. So let's just start on one of the edges that are perfect. So the upper or lower edge is good and then the side rows we'll worry about in a moment. So starting in your very first one just join it, the yarn, chain one, and in the corners of all of these, all four, you're gonna do a single crochet, chain two, 
single crochet into the same stitch. Now the beautiful thing about this is that the next few rows or rounds after this there's no dependency on the amount of multiples. So if you have to fudge it in any way you can do so pretty easily. So just single crochet yourself across the edge. I'll see you at the first turn to make sure that you understand on how to go down the side rows in just a moment. So in coming to the first turn I'll show you the other side too where the yarns are being carried up. So the last stitch is gonna be a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So as mentioned the designer is suggesting that we automatically just jump kind of every, ever do four and then kind of jump one. So you have the first row in. So you're going to do the next one. So this is gonna be, just say this is two and this is three and four like that. And so they're recommending then to skip one and do the next four. So we have one, two, three, four. If you don't think it's sitting down properly just add a stitch. It doesn't really matter at this point. Um, there's nothing depending on the, on the counts. So once you get your next four in there, so just skipping one and then do the next four in a row. And just make a even a decision on your own. So make sure you turn at the bottom of this and go along the bottom edge and then I'll see you on the other side and show you how to cover over top of the yarns that you did carry on the other side. So I'm just on the final side before I'm done the first round. So when you come up to on the side here you wanna make sure that you are covering over top. So when you insert your yarn uh, hook in make sure that you're capturing the yarns that are being carried up underneath those stitches. And you're still maintaining that idea of keeping four in a row and kind of skipping a stitch. Or skipping a row I guess you can say. But just making sure that you're always collecting these carried strands so that it's up underneath the project itself. So please do this all the way and I'll meet you at the first or where we started and then we'll talk about the remaining of the rounds that need to be done for this border. So I'm coming up to the end and I had you start on this one here where we were doing a corner and you make sure you, that you want to attach it with a slip stitch. So we have a total of nine rounds that need to be done. At the end of each round you need to turn your work around and then go in the opposite direction. So if you're starting make sure that the corners are always matching each other so that you know exactly where you are and just match the stitch to stitch then uh, as you go across. So you're just gonna be single crocheting in each one of the stitches that you now have. If you hit a corner it's going to be a single crochet, chain two, single crochet and then when you get back to the other side you will actually in this case be after the corner and so you'll turn your work and go back in the opposite direction. So I need you to do up to round number nine and then that's where the border is going to finish. So between, so we just finished one already so we're starting number two so we got a little bit of work to do before you can uh, move on in this project. So let's begin uh, the next section in just a few moments from now. Once you have your border done it's gonna look lovely and actually mine is sitting down perfectly so I know yours will as well. So once you get to the final just uh, weave in your last end there just how I showed you with the tapestry needle and then we're gonna move on to doing the hollies and berry next. Now in the blanket pattern you have the option to add the holly and the balls at the edge of the project. So you have to make two leaves like this and then you can make pom poms and this is a pretty large pom pom but I actually have three all the way done. So you have to decide for yourself what you would like to do. If you would like to wash this afghan you need these pom poms to be removable. So you can put it through and then just tie a little a small little bow tie and if you have to wash this afghan you just untie the bow tie and then take them off and then wash it. So the leaves will be sewn into position permanently and these can be removable if you need them to be. So of course there's a diagram to be able to follow. So you'll follow it right here. We have written instructions for that as well. It's actually just two revolutions. Now I found with myself it's that if I, I did the first one and it looks pretty open but you can just change the hook size to go smaller if you would like to compress it a little bit more but just keep in mind that it may change the way that it looks comparison, uh, comparing to the uh, berries that are added. So just keep that in mind and if your pom-poms are way too big you can keep trimming these and making them much smaller as well. So that's something that's an option. So let's begin and we'll do our two rounds of the holly and I'll just demonstrate it one time. I did decide a different color just to because you can't see dark colors on my camera. So let's begin. Let's begin. We're going to start with the slip knot and I need you to chain 15. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 
12, 13, 14 and 15. Let's go slowly as we circulate around this chain. So we're gonna go down and back down the other side and we'll do our first revolution. So let's do that nice and slow together. So let's begin. I'm actually watching the diagram off camera so I'm a little slower when I do that. So I wanna go second chain from the hook, grab the back hump of the chain and I want you to single crochet that one. I then want you to half double crochet that same stitch, that same chain. Okay, so that first one has one single and one half. Now the next one, the next two in a row will actually have two half double crochets. So we have one and two. Now all the way to the end is really quite straightforward. So let's begin. The next five in a row will each be a double crochet. So let's count those out together. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Now the next five in a row will each be a half double crochet. So let's do that and we'll count those up together too. So we have one, two, three, four, and five, which will then leave you to the last chain that's available to you. In the last chain, you wanna do the following. You wanna apply four single crochets into that last chain and automatically turn the project so that the starting chain that is currently down will be facing up. So let's just put it in. So we'll take one single crochet and then we're gonna do two. Go right up over top of that beginning straggler two to get it stuck underneath. So that was two, this is three and four. And notice how the project is naturally rotated around. So this was the chain and because I had you go into the back hump of the, this looks like a perfect row. So let's go back down the other side of this. So the first five in a row will be each a half double crochet. Noticing that I'm going over top of the straggler to hide it. So we have one, two, three, four and five. So we're just basically doing the same thing but on the opposite side. The next five in a row is a double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four and five. The next two in a row will each be the same thing. It'll be a half double crochet. So we have one and two. And in the very last one that's right here, it's going to be a half double crochet. And a single crochet into the same one. So that's kind of how we started, right? And then you're just gonna join it to the very beginning single crochet and that completed round number one. Let's move on to round number two. Round number two is pretty straightforward. There's actually a repeat going on. If you can see that happening, that's awesome. And we're gonna start off. So we're gonna just chain one and we'll put one single crochet in the first. And now here's gonna be like the repeat pattern then going to the other tip. So it'll start off with the next one being a half double crochet and then a double crochet and then the next one is gonna have some stuff in it. So it's gonna be a treble first, but you're not done. You're then going to do a pico. So the pico is th chain three, so one, two, three. And in the top of that same treble, just slide up underneath the stitches like so and pull in, in this. And this gives it a tip point. And in the same one where this last treble is, you'll put a new treble in. So it's sharing the same stitch. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're gonna make our way. So we're gonna be coming down in the back up. So we're doing like scalloping. So the next one is gonna be one double crochet and we need to make it smaller. So the next one will be a half and now we're gonna go bigger again. So we're gonna go double crochet and the next one has to be this treble work with the pico. So you start off with the treble, chain three and finish it off as a pico. Same one. And that's gonna be a treble again. And then let's get smaller. So the next one is gonna be a, a double. And let's go smaller even. The next one is a half then. And now we're gonna get bigger again. So it'll be a double. And the next one will be that treble point that we need to do. So the treble, chain three to start the pico. And then treble into the same one. So we're getting close to the other side here. So you're gonna get smaller again. So the next one is a double. The next one is a half. And then the next two in a row are each a single. So we have one and two as a single and we wanna do another pico here. So just chain three and pico it. And now we're coming down the other side. So starting in the next stitch the first two are single crochets, so one and two. Then you're gonna get bigger again. So it's gonna be half and then a double. That's the next one. And then you'll have these trebles again. So we'll do a treble and then a pico and treble into the same stitch. And then we need to get smaller again. So the next one has to be a double. And then go one more smaller. So the next one's a half. And then get bigger again. So it's double. And the next one is the treble. With the pico again. So it's pretty, it's it's a easy uh, round to be able to remember. So let's get smaller again. So a double and then a half and then bigger again. So a double and then another point. So it'll be a treble, pico, and then a treble into the same one. And then you want to get smaller again. So it'll be a double and then a half and the last stitch in is a single crochet and then just that's it. So just slip stitch to the first one and then you're done. So you wanna create probably a, an extra long tail with this one here because you're gonna use that to sew it down to the project itself. So just pull it through and make two of these and then actually you have to make a total of eight of these. So there's two per corner if you wish to do all four corners and this would be how it would work. So let's uh, just cover the pom-pom. So the pom-pom here, I did a pom-pom maker but you can see in the instructions itself you have to make 12 of them if you'd like to do all four corners. You can use your fingers to do it if you wish. I just find a pom-pom maker is a little bit faster for me and the yarn strands that I use to secure it, I'm going to leave those there and I will tie it down to the particular project when I'm ready. So we're gonna go and I'm gonna show you how to attach this then to the corners. Wow. So what this is is that there's different sizes of uh, pom pom makers. This particular kit came with all four sizes and they when you open them up you realize that you think that they're broken because they're separate units like this but in actual fact you have to have them separated in order to do it. So some people use uh, for pom poms they use cardboard or they could use their hand in order to make pom poms. These have to I have to say they make one of the most perfect uh, pom poms you'll ever see. So today I'm going to show you how to operate these and it's the same operation for all sizes and I will show you how to do that. So let's begin to show you. So just put the two sides, okay. The outside hinge is going to be toward the outside and the other one is to on the other side. Okay, match it up. Use the divots to hold just like you see here and just kind of pin it together. So you're going to do it in a way that is going to just hold it together as you do it, 
okay. So it's just gonna be good and uh, they don't need to match each other up there. It's just as long as you're pinching here and it holds it and it just, it's just lightly holding it. Once you start wrapping it, it'll stick together without you having to hold it uh, really quite tightly. So it's just a matter of starting this and getting it wrapped around a few times. So I'm gonna use my left hand to wrap and all I wanna do is fill in the space on this whole half side. So I'm not gonna jump over to the other side as of yet and I just want to continue to wrap. So I'm gonna go right up to this edge and I'm gonna go right up to this edge. Now you can either count it out if you want to if you would like to be really super super accurate uh, with your counting so that it's equal on both sides of this tool or what you can just do is just wrap it and make it look like it works. Okay, so because this is variegated I'm kinda just jumping around a little bit and what I wanna do is I wanna continue to wrap now and as you get more and more it just sticks together on its own. So once you're satisfied with it, now you can just cut your yarn. So now I'm gonna jump to the other side and pinning those two other two together. I'm gonna do the same thing and just start it. And wrap again like I did the other side. So continue to wrap this side and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay, once you're satisfied with it, all you just gotta do is trim this other yarn. So what you wanna do now at this point is that you want to close this contraption. So just close it and also open up these clips and they are locking on to its neighbor but not uh, opposite to each other. So just close it, so just lock it and lock the other side. So now the entire ring is now uh, full and now we're going to then separate these and being able to make the pom-pom. So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to grab our scissors next. So with the space that is existing in between just like you see here we're gonna run our th scissors through and we're just gonna start on one side and work our way to the other side. So just going right directly in half, okay, and we are just gonna gently cut. Okay, just do a few at a time if your scissors can't handle it and you do not wanna let this ring go. Everything is being held into place as you're, you're doing it. Now the size of your pom-pom is varied on the size of this ring but also how many times you wrap it as well. And you go right to the end. So you wanna physically see this gap as you go. So now you're gonna go back to the other side. Do not let this fall apart on you. Again, holding everything together and you're gonna do the other side now. There's nothing holding these rings together so you kinda wanna hold on to it at that point. So right now I'm about to hold, which I already am, and I go right to the end. So now the rings are actually completely separated from each other but then it's still in the inside. So just gently put it down and I need you to grab enough strand. Now if this material is not strong enough to be tied then you gotta use a different material in order to do the tie in the middle. So what I'd recommend for you is that grabbing the same amount of yarn you're gonna wanna tie about two, three, or four, or five times in the middle in order to really get it to, to separate or to get it to really be tight. So just grabbing your yarn and what I like to do is that I like to use a, a, an extra um, strand of string as I'm being able to tie it to my project. So just slipping in between the two gaps, the gap spaces as you see here and you can turn it around and just bring it to the other side. Again being gentle about it and just bring it through. And do you see the hinging here? There is a space so the yarn will go in between that too. And you just wanna pull it through. And so just you start to tie your little knot here. So just let's do that. So let's just put that through and really give it a good tug. And this is going on the inside of this. Pull it enough so that it's gonna form it but don't pull it enough that it's gonna ruin it. So then I'm gonna go to the other side now, turn it over and I'm gonna tie this side. So see how I just tied the other side. Now I'm gonna come to this side and tie this side and I wanna do that a few times. So I'm gonna use these two strands that are falling out as my tie strands to go to the project. So I wanna keep those and I don't wanna damage these strings. So when I go to work with this I'll leave them out. So I'm gonna tie one more time and then we're gonna release this pom-pom from the tool. Ok, 
Okay, so there's my strand. So now I'm just gonna hold it by those two strands. So now I can open up the tool by just releasing this, these clamps on both sides. So they're on both sides of the work here. And all I can do is to open it up now and it will release the pom pom. So there's one out. And here's the other one coming out in a second. And there is my pom pom. So now holding it by the two strings so you don't accidentally cut it. Now you just fluff it up. Okay, look how perfect that is. It looks nice and full. And you're just gonna take your scissors then and just any ones that are just abnormally long or just didn't sit right or just kinda looks like it's not working well. Then you're just gonna safely just trim it like this in order to form the pom pom like so. And give it a good shake and look at it and that's how you would create a pom pom with that. So take this other than string strands that are here and you can attach it to the top of a hat really quite easily and that's how you use all these kind of little tools. So the size of the tool uh, then gives you the size of the pom pom. So if you look at it from this point of view see this pom pom it kind of matches that. So if you're looking for a bigger pom pom you can use a bigger tool like so you'll have a much bigger and if you want smaller then you just use a smaller like so. So, so I wanna attach this so I have this already done. If you use a different color leaf and you go all the way through you will see it on the opposite side here. So keep a, a mental note of that. So I think they have the same color so that you can sew it down so you won't see it. If you decide to do this, uh, I did it the way it suggested but if I was doing this and you weren't watching me I would've just like got a few layers on the top of the stitch work so when I turn it over you don't see it coming through. So that's kind of like a surface. So I'm just gonna follow what it says. So you're going to put the leaves so that they're kind of just slightly coming out like this and get rid of any loose ends that you know you're not gonna deal with. So I already dealt with the beginning. And I wanna start so that they're, the ends are kind of tipping or like touching each other. And I'm going to throw this through a tapestry needle. Now I wanna kinda just pull it up and I wanna kinda go into the project itself. And again if it's the same color then you would never really see it on the other side. Well it wouldn't be as clear to see it. So I wanna pull through and I wanna just work within the seam line itself. Okay so I'm gonna come in. So just stay towards the middle. And then coming back. So you have a line that appears in the middle that will be coming. So I wanna go and advance a little bit more. I'm coming back. So you're just gonna sew it to your project and get all your corners done if you wish. When you think you've gone far enough across then what you can turn it over. If you're using the same color you would never see it but um, you just wanna secure it through on the back side. So if it was me and this was uh, and you weren't watching me and it was a different color I would stay on the surface of this so I would be weaving it underneath this piece here and not on the back side. So I bet you're thinking well why are you doing it this way then? But because that's what it suggests. And this is just a practice sample anyway. So once you have it all woven in you should be good to go. And now let's attach our pom poms. So the pom poms are attached not to the edge but actually right into the, the front side of the project. So because I have two strands I wanna make sure that the strands go down in not into the same hole then because there's be nothing to hold it. So I wanna just get the two strands to be just slightly apart from each other and pull through and then you'll have the strands in the back. So then you can pull it right directly to the project and if you're going to remove these you're gonna wanna tie this into a bow tie and just get rid of the extra yarn tail so that it's not so long. And that's if you want to wash your blanket and take these off. So there, therefore that's one. So what's laying down like that and then you'll attach your other two just like it shows in the photograph. Or just slightly like this and the third one. 
So now that we have this make sure that you look at the pom poms make sure that there's nothing out of uh, place with that. They should be solid to the project itself and if you don't plan on washing this thing at all and just making it a more of a decorative item you could just uh, sew those right on to position permanently and not have a bow tie on the back too. So that's something that you can decide for yourself. It's a great little project. Um, I think it's a fabulous project to be quite honest with you. So this is the Holly Jolly Crochet Mosaic, mosaic blanket and I think that it's awesome and this is a new blanket for 2021 by Yarnspirations.com. Have a good one. We hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.